slowly but certainly continuing with it comes. Uh, uh, this was really great. Thank you so much. It's nice to this this came to me today. It's like so beautiful to to read this. Um, like this is my guidance. I'm walking steadily on to a truth. Like yeah, it's not a choice. It is happening. It is the only thing that's happening. So in this light of uh, allowing that, of seeing that that is so, all this takes place that we're doing here. All that takes place for no other reason. And and I'm sharing this. Not see, this is not because I say so, but because it is. You just read that, like, and that and that is great to um, remember uh, when being active in this class what we do today for instance is looking at certain parts of yourself or certain habits or certain patterns that you discover for yourself but not we don't discover this to discuss it with one another like no there's no use in doing that no i'm recognizing it and letting it go and recognizing it and wanting it to be healed um wanting it to be undone um, and that is taking place so it's not even your doing in doing that um, so uh, yeah no I don't want to make it too technical in that sense or uh, too psychological it is just that by um, so I will share certain expressions or certain uh, tendencies with you that you might recognize as oh yeah yeah I do that oh yeah I recognize that so so that's great so you recognize it for the rest so to speak you don't need to do anything with it so that's why I want to be say careful in in doing this what we're doing because um, see the the tendency of the say the human mind is to keep repeating the ideas that are bothering you to keep repeating the patterns and the habits in order to maintain them more than anything and not letting them go but maintaining them so that's why we want to stay out of completely since this this is in fact part of our transformational process so uh, otherwise you get something like there was there was a tendency i don't know if it's still going on like a tendency for the uh, for course groups to meet and talk about things talk about the lesson or talking about forgiveness instead of getting into the action of becoming willing to let go um you know as a as an action of mind more than that like now we don't want to get into discussing things and and in fact keeping it here now all of this is and what we just experienced in the meditation too you see it's like when you start to read this with the reason with the purpose of um, knowing where you're going <laughs> you don't want to hold on to anything it's like there's nothing in fact there's nothing of this world that i want I find myself in it and it appears to be real at times but there's nothing that I want from it there's nothing that I want from it and and that is not like a monk hiding yourself isolating in order to be out of it no it is like this is an experiment that we're doing we're actually discovering that there's an alternative that's being offered continuously right next to the perception that we have and um, so we want that we want that alternative because there's nothing here that we want according to our own ideas so that's that's already enough psychology in that sense <laughs> it is not really psychology but it's it's more like uh, getting to know yourself in the tendencies that you have to to uh, stay in space and time because you think you have something to do there or that you like that you um, are needed in space and time or more ideas that you can have like we will meet many of them 
which is perfectly all right to at least encounter and to, to take a look at, but but not to maintain it. So and this is like, yeah, that that's great if you can say make that agreement with one another. It's like we're not going to do that to to keep each other here, so to speak. This is really transformative. It is it is a possibility to to come out of where you find yourself, to um, become willing to receive the love of God in your consciousness on a daily basis, to see that when you forgive that literally the power of God is flowing through you to do that. That's why it feels so good and that's why it's so great to let go. Okay, so um, I made some, um, say some, some statements, I wrote down some statements and um, tendencies or habits or however you want to call them. And one of the lists, there, there are two sections, so <clears throat> one of them is, is this, is like the, um, the action of mind that you're actually doing. So what are you doing when you have a tendency to, to fall into a pattern? To, to numb yourself, to not feel what you're actually feeling uh, and all this, you know, it's like all this that you have learned to adapt yourself to a space-time uh, reference, a space-time world, a space-time idea in your mind, uh, like a, um, how can I call it, it's like anything that makes this world real, it's like what have you done, because you feel the pain of the place where you find yourself in space and time, and you did something with the pain, in order not to completely feel it, otherwise you would not be in this world, it's like, you, otherwise you would literally be lifted out of it, but you did, you found a way of, uh, say, uh, dealing with it, or um, coping, yeah, that's a word, coping with it, in order to survive, to continue in this story of yourself. And um, so there might be some habits that you recognize as, oh yeah, that's actually something I do. So then what happens if you recognize it? That's okay, it's just self-reflection. We're not going to discuss it, it's self-reflection. You're suddenly, oh yeah, I recognize it. That's all that's necessary. So then I have I have another <laughs> list of, um, I think, five uh, tendencies or patterns, and you'll see that too. So th this is very, it's more, it's different. It's not an action of mind, but actually, yeah, something else. You'll see. And, yeah, we, we go from there. So the first, the first ones, so patterns and habits. I just made, I made something out of it. So, patterns and habits. An exercise. Five tendencies. So here we go. I hope you can read it. What did you do? Say, in fact, what did you do to adjust to this place to make it livable for you to be in space and time? So five tendencies that are very common. It's adjusting. One is adjusting. Second one is performing. It means like, almost like acting. You perform. You do what is asked and you uh, comply. You, 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 know, you sacrifice, in fact, your own authenticity in order to, to be part of it. Oh, yes, sacrifice. See, that's another one. Sacrifice. Escape. Some way. Um, many varieties in that. Okay. So I go through them again. So five tendencies, adjusting, performing, sacrifice, 
escape. Okay, so these are just very common things that you recognize probably and like and maybe you do all of them, who knows, or uh, we're used to doing all of them. Like most of most of this is um, uh, has to do with the fact that you're very sensitive in being present because you're you're this sensitive um, person, personality, but this sensitive being in communication with everything in nature, like in nature, the basic you, say the true you, is a completely in communication with everything that is. So now, in this dream that it came, in this dream, in this world that it brought with itself, it adjusts itself to isolation or to separation, while it knows deep down inside that there is communication, that there is, um, that say everything is perfectly communicating. So the pain of not feeling that, the pain of not experiencing that temporarily is, uh, is in fact unbearable, like it's, it's overwhelming, it is too much. So, so you will have to do certain things in order to, uh, to cope with the place that you find yourself temporarily, right? So you, you might recognize this when I share it like this. It's like, you don't hear this every day this way, but in fact, you came from heaven, like you came down from heaven. You took with you an idea of a world in which you can be separate, like you forgot to laugh and you took it serious. Now you're caught in it and you're being born in it suddenly you have an age suddenly you have parents suddenly you have a whole yeah human law to which to adhere and uh, that that's that's not working it's not working maybe right away you discovered that as a baby maybe a little later as a child maybe even after that or maybe who knows when but you, you start to come into, imagine, by the way, it's like imagine being born into a world where you suddenly have to breathe uh, oxygen. Imagine that. Like, if that isn't a trauma, like an immense, immense idea, suddenly you start to breathe oxygen that's burning in your lungs. Like, this is how you, how you got here. So something is fundamentally wrong in that idea. You know, and, and you told from all the beginning, all the time, that it's normal, that it's the way it is. It is uh, the world that you live in. It is, we're all doing that, um, like the confirmation of that, that everyone is doing that. So you will have to change in order to adjust yourself to the place that you find yourself. Well, deep down, you know there's something else going on. Everyone knows it. Like, there's no place where you cannot have that memory of, of wholeness and purity, innocence and perfection. Everyone carries that idea, you know? And, and it's like all the adjustments that you make in order to, to make it work, it brings incredible stress because you find yourself in a place that is not yours, that you, where you don't belong. And, and you try to adjust yourself to it as if you are part of it and are, say, literally an inhabitant of it. So that's, that's pretty wild too. So these are very basic ideas that I'm sharing, but it's really fun to look at it this way, uh, especially when you see yourself as being born in a body walking around in space and time in places where you cannot just be everywhere but you have to be in a certain location well i think for everyone that leads to incredible stress because you want to be everywhere when you think about something you want to be there when uh, all these things that you dream of as a child or maybe later too like there always seems to be a distance to be covered before you can get somewhere. It, it takes tremendous effort to travel around the world in order to go from A to B or all these things. Like we, we, got, we adjusted ourselves to it 
but it doesn't mean it's normal like no of course not so you have different um, different um, possibilities that you know of that's why in the awakening then suddenly discovering there's such thing as light communication is is totally amazing you see that you can actually directly communicate with one another suddenly you see that like minds are communicating it is you think and and suddenly somebody calls you or um, all these all these things that you start to discover you know so that's that's really lovely but it's great to look at it this way um, because of the fact that you have uh, adjusted yourself to a place where you don't belong and, and you call that normal or you call that human yeah that's just the way it is you know that kind of thing nobody could tell you why that is that way so here's here's that in fact here's that answer so i i love i love to share that because it it gives you uh, a sense of uh, freedom to to see that you in order to be yourself you don't need to do these things like when you know that you're uh, walking back home so to speak when you know there's only a way to god uh, like that is the only thing that is going on in this process that we find ourselves in coming from this separation state um, saying like okay none of this i don't need any of this i'm going back home um, uh, i'm i hear a calling and i'm following that i follow the guidance that god has given me and uh, see where i go like i'm i'm led to that so then it doesn't mean uh, it doesn't mean anymore that you uh, have to completely dissect the whole process that you were in a moment ago uh, or that you have to do deep psychotherapy or whatever to to get to the bottom of your thinking in order to uh, to figure it out how to take the next step and and all these things that we have also used to repair ourselves in this dream are also yeah not useful like it's not going to help us to get out of here none of that it was only made in fact to keep us here you know it's like that's pretty wild if you recognize that that's pretty amazing so all the ways of fixing the problems that we have used is all based on an idea to stay here and to get it solved here while that will never succeed so now recognizing the tremendous speed up that is taking place by not having to do that uh, it can still be fun to to take a look at certain aspects of it and when i say uh, it can be great fun it can also help you to see like i'm i'm just totally amazed by the the thing that is actually occurring in me in which i start to recognize my true nature and my process to come to the recognition of that even that i don't have to do because it's it's already given to me it is it was successful and it did occur okay so now the actions that i was talking about the actions finding yourself in this place and what do you do what are very common patterns and habits so this is one of them overthinking 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 then another one is this overreacting overreacting then another one is this Oh, and we were here, the other way. Well, wait, yeah, overdoing. Oh yeah, oversleeping. That's another one, oversleeping. Uh, I mean, taking a lot of time to sleep. More than actually is necessary. Overeating. Eating more than you have to. 
just to give yourself some sense of everything is comfortable and okay. So these were five tendencies. Overeating, oversleeping, overdoing in whatever form, overthinking, overreacting. It's more like just to mention a few. <laughs> it's just to mention a few. It's it's like in our uh, transformational process, you you get in touch with your own say way of thinking. So also with your own insanity in that sense, you see how you are um, say have tendencies to overreact or to overdo or to overeat or to you know you like you discover all these things and why am i saying this like why what is the value of that to you well and the the recognition of uh, of the action the recognition that you do that and the reason why might not be connected to one another like you might have heard like okay if i do that then i'm probably trying to fill up some emptiness inside of me and um, yeah I want to say it a little bit more extreme in that sense it's like now you're you're overreacting to uh, a system like a, a world and a place because it is the place where you do not belong where you don't say where you don't feel connected to never completely there's always something missing there because it is not really your true home like when when there's such thing as fulfillment you would not have any um, gravings to any of these things you know the fulfillment would take place inside of you and and that would be it that that is completely nurturing so in in the transformational process then it's in fact we go that way by taking time to rest more, not to overreact, uh, to to calm down our nervous system, if you want, uh, to to uh, eat lightly before meditation, to uh, say get up early in the morning to meditate, uh, to say to break the patterns of long sleeping and just say staying in a kind of a comatose um, kind of uh, state, it's like trying to not be here so all these things um, you learn of will shift and change in your transformational process it can be that when you start reading uh, one of the books uh, one of the inspiring books that you have that you suddenly don't sleep at all at night because you're so touched by what you're hearing or you're so excited about the light experience that you're having so all that is changing and changing so uh, yeah, the great thing I think is is this then that the process is taking place. You are guided uh, along this path. You get instruction on a moment by moment basis. There's nothing, hardly anything that you can do in order to facilitate this, except being willing to let these changes occur and to move through them uh, in whatever form they are appearing to you. Um, so um, that's that is great to know that it works like that. Like it's great to know. Also to um, to find out that you can allow changes in your behavior, in your habits, in in the way, in your patterns. You can allow changes because you feel that you have to do that. It's like that is that is perfectly all right to have changes occur and see that that. Uh, is actually helpful to you like nothing stays the same it can look like that for some time maybe for years and then suddenly there's a shift because your consciousness changed again like you made another shift into a whole different state altogether like then you see that the confusion that takes place is uh, is just temporary but it's like it's all in order to um, uh, to come to say it's all part of the the plan if you want and also part of the journey to the goal that you have before you 
like returning back home. So, and yeah, that's always great. It's like in, in a human relationship, you can encounter that too with the idea of um, everything that you normally say uh, with your words to somebody who's close to you. You have a certain way of dealing with one another. At a certain point, a certain day, suddenly everything is like interpreted 180 degrees upside down. It, it does not work anymore. And everything you say to comfort and to bless, so to speak, is also misinterpreted. It, it seems like you're speaking a different language. So you might recognize that too in your um, awakening. I had this many times, I know that. It's like, I can't believe it. The words that I said yesterday, if I use them today again, they don't work. Like they work average, like oil on the fire instead of the other way around. And they were comforting before, now they increase great anxiety and, and incredible stress. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, all these, all these changes, you see that uh, there's a perfect plan and it's working and, and you're completely in it. So, so you go with it. You allow these changes to occur, you don't suppress them, you allow that to occur and see that it's actually beneficial to you even though you were confused for some time and didn't know how to deal with it or how to look at it. So that's a part that I love to share with you. Um, so I I got some, um, uh, what you call them, so whiteboards too that I want to use, but f before that I want to uh, share something else. Um, this is just almost like a yeah we 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 do this like almost like a relaxation. So um, it's totally different than you expect probably. Um, so I'm using this actually as this, and that is habitats like habits. Uh, now I'm making habitats of it. So you see six habitats, habitats like places to be, or places to yeah to discover, or places to. Um, so there must be one that is really attractive to you, and other one not interesting at all, or something like that. Like maybe maybe something is interesting to you about this that you say like oh yes I love this because of mm -hmm. so pick one of the six I would say pick one of the six that you really like and you don't have to remember yeah you will see it in the in the whiteboards too in a moment okay so that's one more and that is patterns we're talking about patterns I want to pick your favorite here too. We'll see them in a moment when I pull up the um, when I pull up the whiteboards. I don't know why I can't remember the name. Um, so uh, I want to share something else at this point.
say, so I hope they went in a little deeper even, but they didn't. I thought it did. <laughs> I wanted to go to the inner space of the molecules and atoms, but they did not. So I felt a bit closed in now by the by this reference. Um, but anyway, so <clears throat> it was just a beautiful um, visual uh, to to come into like beyond beyond the borders, beyond the boundaries that you're familiar with. And, and that's always great, like to, to come into an idea of expansion is already a relief. Like, oh, look at that, it's so great. And between the space between the, the atoms, like, oh, that's so much space. So you, that's wonderful too. So it is never what it appears to be, that's for sure. And um, so now to bring some sense into our activities here, it's like it, it all comes together. I know that for sure. I just never know how. <laughs> um, so bear with me, please. So here we get the, the whiteboards out. And this is the interactive part. basic needs of a child but now what is the basic needs what are the basic needs of you 